For some reason, I cannot start this video properly. I've been trying to film an intro for the last six minutes and I cannot do it. I can't say, hello everyone and welcome back to another video, because for some reason it just doesn't work. So, um, let's just skip that. I've decided to return to the Phone Archive, a series in which I look at weird, obscure, strange and stupid phones from all around the globe, right here for your entertainment. I have actually decided that I am planning to do a full month of just having a look at iPhone clones. I'm probably going to regret doing this, but just to warn you all, I have about like 30 iPhone clones, and they range from 2G to 7. I've got like four or five 2G ones, the majority of them are threes and 3Gs, a couple of fours, uh, one or two fives, a six and a 6S, and then I've got three sevens. So that's quite a lot of videos. This series, We'll probably end up going all the way through June as well, but who knows? Let's just get into this because I've been sitting here for 11 minutes now trying to figure out what I'm going to say. And for today's one, we're going to be starting off where it all started because everyone's having a look at iPhones because Apple's decided to release their 64th iteration of an iPhone, so everyone's pulling out iPhones and going, hey, iPhones. So I've decided to do the same thing. I've jumped on that train and went, hey, look, I've got iPhone 2. So um, yeah, we're having a look at an iPhone 2G clone. This one is a uh, dual SIM. That's, that's fantastic. All the information that you need here. This box is actually quite thick. It's quite a big box. Um, but let's go around the box, because we have an iPhone on the front. The texture is actually quite weird for some reason. I, I think it's been sitting out in the sun, possibly, or something. I have actually no idea. I got this from a porn broker in the city probably like a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And I went in there and just asked if they had any like cheapo phones and stuff. And um, I ended up pulling out a bunch of like faulty devices and stuff. But this was one of them. And he said, this is an original iPhone. And he wanted 50 bucks for it. I said yes to the $50, but I said no, that it's not an original iPhone, it's a uh, original iPhone knockoff, but that's okay. So yeah, I paid 50 bucks for this, but it was worth it. No, it probably wasn't, but that's okay. But um, it's Bluetooth. It's got a 512 megabyte T flash card. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, wait a second, the iPhone 2G, first gen, whatever you want to call it, had either four gigs, eight gigs, or 16 gigs of internal storage. Whereas this has 512 megabytes T flash card. And the answer to all of your questions as to why 512 megabytes is printed on the side here is because 512 is a bigger number than 4, 8, or 16. Disregard the megabyte and everything's cool. Uh, dual SIM, multi touch handwriting panel. Doesn't come with a pen. So I'll have to try and find a stylus because the touchscreen on this is absolutely horrible. Uh, innovation changes the future. Uh, the bottom of the box has absolutely nothing on it. It's just nice and plain. Inside the box is where it all counts. Oh, well, there's uh, nothing in there either, just in case there was some sort of trickery. But no, there's the device there. The wonderful iPhone 2G clone. We also get a couple of things inside the box, but let's have a look first battery, we get the cables, and that's it. However, if you pull up this bit of plastic, there's a uh, lovely microfiber cloth here to clean the screen of your device, but it's stuck down to the adhesive that's supposed to stick this down to the bottom of the box here, but the, don't ask questions. We get a mini USB cable, which is useless. We get some headphones, or earphones as they are called, and we actually have this connection here. I don't know what this is. It's not a Samsung one. It's not a micro USB. Nothing like that. It's a weirder connection that has been on a lot of clone phones. I have no idea what this connection is. So if someone knows what this connection is possibly called, please let me know down in the comments because I don't even know. So many clone devices use this. It's some sort of proprietary one, I believe. I, I have no idea. But earphones with this? Ah, the plot thickens. The battery in this is a 1200 milliamp hour battery as opposed to the 1400 milliamp hour battery on the original iPhone 2G. This one is all in Chinese. Uh, the only things that I can read is numbers and lithium ion and the fact that it was made in 2008. Uh, it is just a lithium ion battery, 1200 milliamp hour, rechargeable, made in China. It is slightly swelling up. So pretty much after this review, the battery is going to sit in its box and hopefully it doesn't continue to swell up. I mean, nowadays, this is pretty much a collector's item, much like the actual iPhone 2G itself. But these clones are so much more entertaining to look at, I must say. We get a manual that's about the size of a dictionary, and, uh, yeah, you wanted a manual, man. You've got one. It is all in English. 
two. How many pages have we got rocking in this thing? Like a hundred? 95 pages. This is a manual. The SIM card can be removed, so please keep the children away from swallowing these little parts. I'm not lying, that's what it says. There should be a whole video dedicated to this manual, I swear. How to set prompt wave message. Oh my god, this is funny. All right, appearance, yeah. Um, if anyone wants to see a full video of an iPhone manual, Jesus. Uh, yeah, okay. And moving on to the actual device itself. Now, you wouldn't believe this, but these iPhone clones actually predicted something, that by the year 2017, most devices made by Apple will only have one port, the universal port to charge it, to do everything. This is the same. This comes with only one port. Until the iPhone 4 clones, then they started to put more ports on them. But pretty much all of the 2G and 3G clones that I have only have one port on it. And it's that one right there. So this is where you connect your headphones. This is where you charge it. This is where you connect it to the computer. Everything. So back in 2008, these manufacturers of clone devices predicted something that would happen by about 2017. That is actually quite scary to think about, to be honest. Anywho, let's have a look around the iPhone 2G. Now you're going to notice something about these clones is that the screen size is never the same as the actual real deal. This is probably a 3 inch display as opposed to the 3.5 inch display on the actual real deal. We get our home button there at the top, get our power button, or so you may think. On the side we get absolutely nothing except for a speaker grill just plonked right there. At the bottom, another speaker grill and a microphone. And then on the side, nothing else except for that weirdo universal port. And then on the back is where things get really interesting. Hi phone, how you doing? Pretty good. How about you? Good? Wonderful. We've all come to a point where we're now talking to our phones in third person. Uh, but we have Bluetooth multi-touch handwriting right on the back there. This is actually aluminium. I think it is anyways. But the Hi phone, innovation changes the future. Technology, communication, freedom. That's basically it around the device. We take the back cover off, as you do on an actual iPhone. Yeah, this is, um, oh, no? Plastic, plastic, sorry, my bad, it's plastic. But we can see our camera, which is probably a 0.3 megapixel camera. We get two mini SIM slots, which are only capable of doing 2G each, which is useless because in Australia, 2G doesn't work anymore. We have a 512 meg micro SD card preloaded into this device, as it said on the box, because 512 is a bigger number than 4, 8, and 16, as I said. And then we have a sticker here, which tells us the IMEI information, as well as the HiPhone model i68 plus. It says it's made in Taiwan. Usually it says China, but okay. Uh, it also has... What does it say under this sticker here? I just scratched away at this crusty ass label here, just so I could see on the sticker, it has labeling on it. So I'm leaving this micro SD card in here. I'm not going to replace it. going to leave it in there and gonna get the battery, chuck the battery in. There's no point of putting a SIM card in because it's only 2G only. The only thing I'll eliminate by putting a SIM card in is that it won't ask me to insert a SIM card every five seconds. But chucking the back cover on just like that, nice and easy. These sound absolutely dreadful, by the way, but uh, at least I can use them on all the other clones. So it's a positive. I guess it's a positive. So you've just bought your brand new shiny iPhone 2G from some dodgy guy on the side of the street, and you're wondering to yourself, how do I power this thing on? If you read the manual, you would have known. Otherwise, you'd be holding the power button down going, come on, come on, and nothing happens. Because for some reason, the home button powers on the device. I'll listen to this. Oh, I miss polyphonic ringtones. Oh my god. And then you press power button and it locks it because that's the lock button, but the home button is the power button. Well, anyways, we're at the lock screen here, which is one of the default wallpapers, just a picture of some sort of planet. Don't know what planet that is. Sarcasm. And then we have our actual home screen here, which has a couple of apps. We have STK, which is no SIM. That's it. Call log. Waiting. No call log. Memo. I wonder if someone actually used this or not. Uh, return, set time, check. Oh yeah, the touchscreen is absolutely horrible. I forgot to mention that. Uh, no entry. Delete all. No entry. Okay, fair enough. Yep, no worries. Message. Is there anything in messages? SMS. Inbox. Waiting. Waiting. Sometime today. No? Nothing? My camera just doesn't like cheap LCDs. It just doesn't like it. So I've got to try a manual focus and hopefully it works. 
But uh, anyways, SMS doesn't really have anything great on here. Uh, multimedia. MP3 player. Oh, what does it look like? Oh, we actually have something on here. I hope that's not copyrighted. How do I go back? We will try the usual stuff on here, but I'm just going through the apps first, just really quickly. Media player. Is there a... Oh my god, there's default stuff. Oh dear. Whoa, my... Nike. Let's try Nike. Is it a Nike commercial? There we go. Yep. Whoa. 176 by 176. Oh, the sound. I'm going to cut most of that footage out during editing, but holy moly. That sounded bad, and it looked bad. Hang on. I'm confused. Are we going on repeat here? I think so, but there's quite a lot. Uh, let's just try another one just for the sake of it. Okay, some sort of, like, K-pop thing. I, I don't even know. Um, anyways, yeah, it has uh, preloaded videos, which is fun. Recorder. Record list. Do we have anything? No, but we can. I don't know if we should. Call recorder. It's pretty useful. Oh, there actually is something. I wonder what it is. I pressed multimedia on you. Mum? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Love you, bye. Ah. Uh... Okay, Bluetooth, hand-free, device list, I wonder if it's been paired with anything, no. Are you starting to see the wonders of the iPhone OS that's loaded on here? How fast and responsive it is? It is running the typical Java operating system, I think it's called Nucleus OS, I believe, but it's just that random-ass Java operating system that's loaded on pretty much every clone. That was made before sort of 2014, 2015-ish. Some of them actually still use this Java-based OS, so yeah. Uh, camera? Camera and Handycam. The first iPhone didn't have video recording, did it? This will be interesting. Photography and film. Film. Uh, maybe I'll do photography. Whoa, we got it, wow. Uh, menu. Quality. Oh, that's not quality. No, that's not quality. Quality. High and normal. Because it's night time, I can't really take any photos of the stuff outside, so I'll have to splice it in for you all. But I plan on tearing this down first. So hopefully I don't kill it. Anyways, enjoy what you're about to see. Alright, testing the iPhone 2G clone out, the iPhone as it's called. There's a prop there, if you can make out what it is. There's the other one. And there's the other one. I estimate that we're doing about three or four frames a second. If that. So, buttery smooth. And you can see all the detail in the brick wall here. It's uh, pretty good. And then good old Stuart. Still chilling. Nothing much has changed ever. And now I officially certify this device as the one they use when they capture UFOs. See, look at them all. I can see them. I love the menu here. Menu, shot, and back. And it's got little artifacts around each word as well. Camera quality, obviously not the best, as you would have expected, but at least it has a camera. What else do we have in folder, which is a floppy disk? Pictures. Yep. Can you swipe across to go to the next one? No, you got to tap on it and then press next. Hey, that's, um, what's her name? Marilyn Monroe. What's she doing on here? I don't know who that guy is. Uh, Britney Spears. Okay, I, I see a pattern going on here. Okay, don't know who you are. Don't know who you are. And we're back to the start. So, 
Yeah, you get some pretty cool pictures loaded on here. And then we have rings. <laughs> no ring. Then we have my MP3. Oh dear. Okay, it's a little bit strange. My movies. Which we've already seen, there's quite a lot on here. My album just has pictures of whoever owned this beforehand. They've taken some photos. But if you couldn't tell by the phone call that was on this, a little kid owned this. What parent buys a clone device for a child and thinks that's okay? That's bad parenting. TF card management, we can go through the SD card and see what's on here, where we can format it. No, we can't do that. We want to keep the stuff on here. Uh, WAP. Does anyone remember WAP? I do. I remember having my Alcatel One Touch 332 and seeing WAP on there. And I remember a friend of mine saying, you can download pictures from the internet. And I was like, holy crap, really? And he showed me on his Motorola V360. He just flipped it open and he's like, yeah. And showed me the America logo, not the America, as in America, the skateboarding brand. He had that as a wallpaper and he's like, yeah, I downloaded it from Google. I'm like, holy crap, can you show me how to do that? And yeah, he showed me how to do that. And that, that was pretty amazing back in, I don't know, 2000 and five or something. I don't know. I'm old. So we can open that up and what's the homepage? I don't know if it'll load anything or not. WAP Montanet. Huh. wonder if Montanet actually exists in some shape or form nowadays. Obviously nothing's going to load, but you could browse the web on this, which honestly would have been quite amazing to see on one of these clone devices. Obviously I can't do it now, but back then it would have been interesting to see what it looked like. Um, before we go into settings, calculator, looks like calculator. Oh, there was actually an off switch, hang on. What did off do? Oh, okay, that closes it, fair enough. Uh, the calendar, wow, that transition, whew. Feels like Windows Movie Maker effects. Uh, yeah, 2008 it's set to. Feels like I'm playing Minesweeper as well, like the layout here. It's like you just press it and then you press it. <laughs> Come on, man. One of these has to have the bomb under it. And dual sim, we can just switch the SIM cards if you want, feel free. Uh, we have PB, it's personal best. Uh, we can browse the phone book. I'll probably have to cut out anything that's on here because there's probably going to be... No, oh, no, there's nothing on here. Nope, okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, phone book, write SMS, whoa. So it's T9 input on a crappy touchscreen. Let's see if I can type hello. This makes no sense. So you press a button and then you got to press one of these ones. So you don't just press one and then keep pressing until you get to the letter that you want. You've got to press it and then go to here. What's the point of that? <laughs> Wait, what does the A do up here? This A has to do something. Come on, A. I borrowed this stylus from a Nintendo DS. I hope it works. God damn it. So I've tried a whole bunch of different things to use as a stylus and I can't find anything that works as a stylus. So I have to use touch input which makes typing on this thing extremely impossible because if I was to do hello, for example, how do you even back? Okay, so we backspace it. And then if we were to type hello or attempt to, we'd have to go this, then this, then we do E, then we do an L, then we do another L, and leave it with O. And that, my friends, is how you type hello into an iPhone 2G clone. You come up with Galco, and it doesn't autocorrect it. That happens to be one of the most useless input methods I've ever seen on a device. What can you say, man? What can you say? Call, at least you can call people. IP. Call for bid. Okay, well, sorry then. Um, oh, that goes back. Even though that looks like it's saying forward, that goes back, I'm confused. But uh, yeah, you can call people an MP3. Yeah, I won't play anymore because I'll load BFG Division or something like that on here and we'll actually test what these speakers can actually do and if there's actually dual speakers or not going on this thing. Um, but otherwise, that's all for applications. There's nothing else. You can't go to the next one because it just keeps opening up another one. But no, you can't go up, you can't go sideways or anything like that. That's it. So we'll jump straight into settings, which shows us phone settings, time and date, language, band select, auto power on and off, alarm and auto key. Activate and deactivate. Well, considering there's only two buttons on this thing, I'm not too sure which one it's going to deactivate. This pretty much has the exact same settings like on any other clone that runs this Java operating system. So it's going to be nothing special. Environment setting, standard, obviously. Input method settings. Can we actually change that? Oh. Uh, no, but we can change it to a bunch of other languages. 
Actually, I better not touch anything because I know what happened the last time I stuffed around with languages. I'm referring to my iPhone 5 clone video where I was going through languages and I changed it and it took me forever to change it back to English. So I'll leave that. That's okay. Display settings. The wallpaper settings. Oh, we can see the wallpapers. Wallpaper one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's try two. Right, okay. Jennifer Aniston? What are you doing on here? Uh, don't know who you are. Orange. <laughs> it's quite ironic. Apple, orange. Aha, funny, funny joke. Let's be kid friendly and put the two Dalmatian puppies as the wallpaper. There we go. That makes me feel better. Backlight, let's change it to 50 seconds because it keeps turning off. Uh, contrast, that looks fine to me, even though the camera is disagreeing with me. Uh, security settings has pin, pin two, power on, password, PWD, and theft proof. <laughs> theft proof. <laughs> Who the hell would want to steal one of these? There's nothing much going on with this. It's pretty basic, but due to the nature of what I do, this video is going to go long, even though I basically covered nothing on this. Uh, but there's not much else to look at. I don't want to dedicate this whole video to having a look at every single video file that's on this thing. I mean, they're probably just going to be commercials and stuff like that that are probably ripped from some low quality source or something like that. Actually, I want to see if my wallpaper worked. Eh, there's the doggos. That actually unlocked fairly smooth. Okay. And you've all seen how wonderful this LCD is, considering that the camera doesn't like it. And you got to see pictures of famous celebrities from both the US and China or Korea or something like that on here. Apart from a teardown, I don't really know what else I could possibly do. Well, anyways, I'm going to load BFG Division on this and, uh, or something. And, uh, why am I pulling off that part? It's this part that needs to come off. And we'll see what we can do. So I've put a random 3GP video on the SD card as well as a couple of MP3 files. So we can test that out. Otherwise, I really don't know much else to do on this. I thought there would have been a little bit more to test, but there's really nothing. I might hold the lock button and see what that does. Also loading. <laughs> if anyone knows that tone, let me know down in the comments. If you hold the lock button, what does that do? So holding the lock button does nothing except for just locking it. Well, let's try one of my random 3GP files. Not support. Okay. Oh, I know why. The resolution is 640 by 480, and this probably only supports 176 by 144 or something. So that's probably why I can't play any of the videos. Just so that's what a recorded video looks like on this. I can't wait till I actually do the test photos because it'll probably be like 3 FPS, as I said, at 176 by 144. It'll be really impressive for, for 2008 quality. So let's jump into the sound test. And of course I put some tracks from Doom Eternal on here. Just sort of test how loud this can get and how clear the speakers are. Okay, well this is BFG 10,000 by Mick Gordon. So in that test, the sound fluctuated between like 91 and then 98 for some reason. Um, I'm going to listen to it again. That's much better. The speakers are actually quite loud, only because there's two speakers in here. You got the side one, and you got the bottom one. So it's actually dual speakers which is quite impressive, and they're not too bad. The previous samples that you heard of sound on this are just low quality and the speakers can't really handle them, but because this is high quality sound, it sounds pretty good. So let's try something with like a stupid amount of bass. This happens to be one of my new favorite tracks off the Doom Eternal soundtrack, and that's Doomed Hunter. It's in the uh, cultist bass level, and it sounds really, really awesome. It's sort of got a, um, a bit of a jungle vibe to it sort of thing, when it sort of kicks in. And it sounds really sick, but it's got a good amount of bass. Yeah. 
Okay, it sounds much better with actual speakers, but uh, yeah, that can't really handle bass that well. I have a feeling that someone will comment about that and be like, that was just noise, that wasn't music. Go to hell, Mick Gordon's a genius. So yeah, we got to 107.2 on this, which is fairly impressive. But as I said, because it's got dual speakers, that kind of makes sense. Um, the battery is dying, which is to be expected. These things don't last a long time on battery. In regards to like multimedia, I've pretty much done everything. There's no FM radio, nothing. It's pretty bare bones. So all up, this uh, shiny plastic thing here is more of a collector's item than it was an actual mobile phone back in the day. Uh, but this is just one of the many iPhone 2G clones that I actually have in my collection. This one just doesn't have a lot of features. The other ones I have have a lot more features. They have games, they have a lot of ringtones and stuff like that. And as I said, I don't want to dedicate a whole video just doing like all the preloaded videos and stuff on here because it's just all going to be commercials and stuff. Otherwise with this, not a lot going on with it. That's pretty much it. I don't know what else to say really. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this thing off by holding the home button. At least I had the little wheel, the little loading wheel there, which kind of resembles iPhone, I guess. Sure, why not? Well, um, anyways, let's go ahead and disassemble the iPhone. I don't know how much they would have sold these for back in 2008. Judging by some clones that I have seen new out at markets and stuff, probably like 100 to 150 bucks, maybe. Oh, that's right, battery. It's just easier doing it like that. But I feel so sorry for the kid that actually got given this and told, hey kid, this is an iPhone. Be trendy like all the other kids. But then again, the front of it kind of resembles the iPhone and the back of it with its silver and black kind of resembles an iPhone, except it says hi phone. It has Bluetooth instead of the Apple logo. So uh, as I said before in the video, that's bad parenting. You can't do that to your child. You can't give them a clone device and expect them to be happy about it. That's not trendy, it's not cool. They'll only get picked on for it. So it appears that we have four Phillips head screws holding this thing together. So I'll go ahead and take them out. We've also got those two little rubber pieces just here covering the other ones. I'm not too sure if there's gonna be a screw under there or not. The objective of this teardown is to take it apart and not kill it because I still need to do the actual camera test and I wanna keep this as a collectible. Oh shit. Okay, I wasn't really expecting that to happen, but all right, fair enough, iPhone clone, that's okay. Uh, I'll have to get that out now. Well, lucky we're tearing it down. How it's built is four Phillips head screws holding it together, and then you've got these little clips on the side here. So you just slip a fingernail into them and you just pull the frame off somehow. Here's a fun fact. There's a channel on YouTube called Lessons. And it's actually a really relaxing channel, as well as being an educational one, where it's a guy taking apart phones, but he uses a plastic knife to take apart devices, which I honestly thought was a stupid thing. I had some breakfast the other day from Macca's, and it came with the plastic cutlery set, and I've been using this non-stop. It's actually really good. So if you can't get a pry tool, just use McDonald's plastic knife or any other plastic knife that you like and uh, you'll be good to go. I had to peel off the little sticker because that was holding it down, but that's okay. Oh, there's the microphone there. We're good. We've got the plastic frame here. That's it. So now we can have a look at what's going on. That little black piece has fallen in there. So I have to get this off. Oh my God. Taking off the motherboard from these little clips that are all on the side here, we can start to pull off Oh, actually, no, we can't. There's a little flex ribbon. I have to be really, really careful here. See? I've got to be really, really, really careful right now. There's a little earpiece just up there. We got our little coin style vibration motor as well as the contacts for the earpiece. But there's two little screws holding down the speakers. So I've got to take this off in order to get to that little black plastic piece. Okay, so I've got the little black plastic piece there. And we can see our dual speakers which honestly is pretty interesting. Now we're at the point in the teardown where I do have to damage this to see what the specs are. Because underneath this shielding is gonna be where the CPU is most likely. So uh, I'm gonna do this as carefully as I can. So I did have to rip the shielding off, unfortunately. I can put this one back on, but not the other one because I had to slowly bend that. But in here is probably just some power IC stuff, I would assume anyways. Uh, so we'll just flip that down 
we can see just here that we have a Spreadtrum processor. Now, as always, I'll take a photo of these and then Google the codes and let you know what they are. I believe there's a flash module just there, or it could be RAM, who knows? Could be probably, I don't know, 32 megs, maybe? Just as a guess. I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws back into here and screw it back down, and then we'll have a look at the camera, and I'll tell you what the processor is and all that sort of stuff. Oh, it's still alive. It's still alive. Does the touch work? Yes, it does. Oh, oof, I didn't kill it. All right, cool. Okay, good. I'm quite proud of myself for doing that. And taking a little tiny camera off there, we've got some codes, so I'll have a look at them. So let me do some Googling and I'll let you know what these codes come back with. Okay, so looking up the code on the camera, I'll display the code here if you want to Google it yourself, but as far as I can see, nothing comes up for it. The CPU, I know is a Spreadtrum SC660-00M3E, but I'll display all the codes here on the chip. Uh, I can't seem to find anything in regards to CPU frequency, RAM, all that sort of stuff. So if you want to Google that, feel free, but I'll probably do some during editing to see what I come up with. As for the expansion module, once again, I'll display the code here for you all to have a Google if you want. But from my research, it comes up with a 256 megabit module, which converted to megabytes is 32 megabytes. So it's got 32 megabytes of onboard storage, plus the 512 megabyte SD card. So it's definitely no powerhouse, but uh, at least it has some sort of guts. All right, I'm gonna put this thing back together, do a final conclusion and call this a video, I think. Taking this apart was really scary, I'll tell you that. The shielding is back in. That, unfortunately, I can't do much about, but uh, it should be fine. At least the sticker is still present. Could maybe just try and flatten that out a little bit. It should be fine. Uh, yeah, it should still work. Really nervous now. Oh, it's upside down. Oh. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all good. Okay, good. Whew. When I hear that tone, I know that everything's all right. Well, there you go. And we'll just make sure touch works and it does. It's good. So I guess if you want to learn the specifications of this device, you might want to pause the video right about now and have a read of them. This is only just my guess for most of them anyways. Um, I'll put any of the codes that I found during the teardown in here. I sort of missed out on the display ribbon, but I would say, just as a guess, 320 by 243 inch display. But I think that's about as close as I can get to the actual specs of this device. Well, anyways, that about does it for this first installment of the iPhone Clone Saga series thing in my phone archive series that I started a while ago. And as I said, for the next month, or maybe a month and a half, I'll be reviewing and having a look at all the different iPhone clones that I've collected from over the years, from 2G up until 7. But otherwise, for this one, fairly basic. Nothing really going on. Was a bit of a laugh to have a look at though. The further we get into the clones, the funnier they get. But uh, I'll go ahead and switch this one off and hear that tone again. Da -da 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 -da. All right, well, I think that's it. If I missed anything, please let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the first installment of this iPhone clone saga and um, there's still plenty to come. But I'm pretty much just doing this while I'm waiting for some stuff to be delivered because of the current delays and all that sort of stuff. Um, obviously I need to put out content and I figured since everyone's reviewing iPhones at the moment because the new iPhone SE 2020 is coming out, I figured it'd be a good time to just look at all the clones. Why not? <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, thanks very much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you got some entertainment out of this because I certainly did. Otherwise, take care, be good people, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one, which part two. You wait. Part two, man. Part two, we got some good ones in store. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.